The hoarseness of horses. Evolution has led to generic traits that interact with the animal's environment to lead to characteristic adaptations making up an animal's nature. We know from research findings that natural selection of horses living in the steppes and plains has led over many thousands of generations to free-running animals and the formation of harems. In wild and semi-wild groups of horses today, we see harems numbering up to 20 numbers. These include females, the nursed offspring, older foals, yearlings and other youngsters, and one stallion, perhaps with a few subordinate males. In these harems, mares gave birth to one foal at delivery. However, when environmental conditions are unstable, longer intervals between pregnancies are common. In nature, weaning of the foal occurs gradually and milk supply from the mare usually ceases before the foal is one year old. The social bond between the dam and foals continue until the foal leaves the mother's group when about one to three years old. Besides interacting with the dam, the newborn foal also interacts with other male and female herd members of different ages from an early age and these interactions contribute to its development, promoting good social cohesion and social stability throughout life. The Coping Framework Although most present-day horses are no longer allowed to move and graze as freely as their wild counterparts, horses still show very similar behavioral and physiological responses as their wild ancestors when dealing with novel events and artificial management practices in their surrounding. The main challenge from a scientific standpoint is to understand what response is species typical and how the interactions with the individual's environment helps it to cope with the living conditions and hence have good welfare. For example, many routine procedures that are commonly adopted nowadays may be stressful for mares during pregnancy because the coping process may fail. Recent research suggests that experiences of the foetus in the uterus go on to affect how successfully the foal will cope with its environment after birth. Animal scientists, veterinarians, and horse breeders know that management practices that may cause stress pain, or anxiety for the pregnant mare should be avoided in order to minimize suffering during pregnancy and birth. However, there has been little scientific evidence of the effects of negative handling practices experienced by the dam during pregnancy on foal development after birth. Also, almost nothing is known about prenatal stress in horses, even though many scientists have investigated newborns and weanlings. Measuring Horse Welfare a multifactorial approach. Evaluating animal welfare involves asking how well the needs of the animals are met. Do they have good health? Can they avoid pain, injury and mental suffering? And can they fulfill all their other needs in the environment in which they live? Scientists use certain indicators to assess an animal's welfare. These indicators can be behavioral, anatomical, physiological, developmental and so on. When a horse is exposed to novel events that demand considerable flexibility in order to cope, one or more of these indicators may be used to assess how successful the coping process is. Such flexibility reflects good welfare only if the animal remains healthy, does not experience negative emotions, and does not perform maladaptive behavioral responses throughout its entire lifespan. Using physiological indicators of welfare, such as heart rate, irregularity between heartbeats, and cortisol, Scientists can measure the animal's responses to potentially harmful events and correlate these with the effects of the management practice on its behavior. Heart rate. With the aid of a heart rate monitor, scientists are able to assess if the horse's heart rate is increased during events such as separation from the dam and other social partners, transitioning to a new environment, or exposure to an unpleasant veterinary treatment. If the response is clearly related to the management practice, then it is reasonable to surmise that the welfare of the animal is poor. However, a peak in heart rate can be due to physiological reasons, and this result must be interpreted with care in each situation. As an example, during mating, the increase in heart rate in a male results from physical performance and sexual arousal, not just poor welfare. Only when indicators are combined can the welfare assessor be confident of negative effects on welfare. Cortisol Cortisol can be used as a physiological indicator of welfare. 
Cortisol, also called stress hormone, is produced by the adrenal cortex of the kidneys, stimulates formation of glucose in the liver, and activates anti-stress and anti-inflammatory pathways. Elevated concentrations of cortisol in the blood, saliva, and feces indicate that the animal may be experiencing short-term suffering that may predict chronic effects. New research suggests that we may be able to measure long-term cortisol elevations in hair samples. Salivary cortisol results from passive diffusion into the salivary glands and constantly provides information about free cortisol concentration, which is the biologically active form. Saliva sampling is an effective non-invasive method, painless and relatively stress-free for horses that are used to be handled by humans. By using a cotton swab, the sampler collects the horse's saliva by soaking a swab and preserving it in a plastic tube for later laboratory analysis. Using behavioral indicators of welfare, animals can be studied non-invasively and their own decision-making processes can be seen in context with the housing and husbandry practice at hand. Behavioral tests can be used to assess the influence of distress experienced during foals early ontogeny on their personalities. More anxious foals with lower learning ability are more likely to be the offspring of more distressed mothers. Behavioral tests, including testing the reactions of the foal to novel objects, recording the foal's distance to humans and to each other, monitoring facial expressions of pain, for example using the HGS app that is available for download in the Animal Welfare Science Hub and at the Google Play Store, and observing their social position within the herd. Reactions of the folds are continuously video recorded and later processed using specialized software. In ideal circumstances, with the use of a combination of indicators, one can study the animal's responses towards housing environments, social management practices, for example, in terms of social complexity, age, and size uniformity, reproduction practices, and weaning methods. Conclusion Due to more specialized research, greater understanding of the complex measures of welfare, and increasing interest in animal welfare, many farms are now employing more friendly and humane management practices. Besides scientists, Members of the public who are also concerned about the effects of artificial management practices can use physiological and behavioral indicators developed by animal welfare scientists to evaluate routine management practices. Offering horses freedom of movement, opportunities to exercise and socialize with other horses, positive interactions with caretakers, protection from environmental extremes, and appropriate pain control and disease treatment can greatly improve horse welfare.